Hello and welcome to the Alternative Living Chat podcast. On this episode, I had the pleasure in talking to Andy Griffey. Andy is an author of the Johnson and Wilde crime mystery series, which are set on the canals. I hope you enjoy our chat and remember, if you enjoy living the alternative life and fancy having a chat, please drop me a message on my social media or email me at never too late our journey at gmail.com and remember two is spelt t-o-o on the email thank you right i'd like you to introduce you to andy and he's going to explain to you who he is and what he does so over to you andy thank you very much well um yes my name's andy griffey g-r-i-f-f-e i always have to spell it out because it's quite unusual um and uh, I'm a, a crime author, uh, and I've written three books, had three books published over the last three years, uh, and they are crime fiction set on uh, the UK's canals. Um, so before I started uh, writing fiction, uh, I dealt with fact. I was a journalist for um, 30 years. Um, mm-hmm. I worked in newspapers, and then I joined the BBC in Bristol Um uh, and then I moved uh, from Bristol to Southampton to Birmingham to Pebble Mill and then to London with the BBC. And I ended up doing 25 years with the BBC as a television journalist and then a, a senior manager. Um, but I always, always wanted to write fiction. And so um, luckily, when I left the BBC, I had the opportunity to sit down here at my house in Worcestershire overlooking the Malvern Hills uh, and um, start writing. Um, I'm married. And my wife is a communications manager for the local hospice, and she was a journalist as well. We met on on the Bath Evening Chronicle, mm-hmm. where we were both, both reporters. Um, and we've got a, a son, uh, Will, who's a, a journalist as well, in uh, London for the Daily Mail sports pages, sports online, uh, and daughter who's who runs her own um, little fashion business down in Cornwall. Nice. Uh, and we've got two two border terriers, Eddie and Phoebe, and I'm hoping. Um, because they're locked in the kitchen, that, that you won't hear them barking or howling during our chat. Don't worry at all, because uh, my, my Mexi uh, could quite easily turn up, but uh, it's just, we'll just see how things go. Sure, sure. Um, so yes, I, I um, my first book was called Canal Pushers, um, and that was um, inspired by um, a lot of speculation in Manchester um, from late 2007 on to 2010 that there was a serial killer stalking the towpaths of Manchester's canals um, and responsible for some of the um, 76 young men who who were found dead and drowned um, in the in the canals of Manchester um, which was an extraordinary number when you compare you know the number say to Birmingham which is so many more canals um, uh, and there was a real speculation at the time that there was this so-called canal pusher at large. The police really dismissed this. But when I came back to write my first book, I thought, um, why not take this idea of a canal pusher and transfer it to the Midlands canals, which I know I know well. Um, and that that started my 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 writing. Wow. It's, so had you been on a boat before or anything like that? To, to yeah, get yeah my, well, my first, I, people often say, you know, why do you, why do you set crime fiction on canals? Because yeah. there isn't actually much of that about. Um, there's a there's one Inspector Morse novel uh, called, by Colin Dexter called The Wench is Dead, um, which features a Victorian murder on a canal, which he then um, solves about 100 years later um, <laughs> without, without leaving his hospital bed. Um, but there's not a lot of crime fiction on canals. Um, but I, I went on my first canal trip when I was 11. Um, I was at boarding school and uh, a friend of mine um, I was called into housemaster study in the middle of the night to be told that my best friend's mother had died suddenly. So father, who was in the army, like my father, kind of came back from Germany and asked if he could take his son and me out of school just kind of to go through a process of grieving. So yeah. he hired a, hired a narrowboat on the Shropshire Union. Uh, and I, I seem to remember it rained a lot and it was obviously pretty, pretty gloomy boat with, um, yeah. uh, you know, son and and husband both grieving mm. um and I but I also really remember you know I thought it would be kind of almost an adventure in a way um but I actually remember aged 11 being slightly scared I thought parts of the canal system were quite dark and menacing you know the the locks with their kind of 
big slippery yeah. green mossy walls and as you sank down into them and it got colder um <laughs> or when you were going in through open countryside and suddenly a wind would whip up behind you and set the hairs on the back of your neck you know going yeah. so I, I just that stuck with me and then um that combined with this story about canal, canal pushers made me think well you know maybe crime maybe canals aren't all sweetness and light and everybody getting on terribly well with each other and all the rest of it um and actually as i did more research i actually learned that you know the canal trust i know likes to pretend that everything on the canals is sweetness and light but by and large people who live on canal boats don't have a lot of time for people who hire canal boats and people who live near canals don't have a lot of time for people who live on canal boats and anglers don't have a lot of time for anybody in a boat and yeah cyclists don't have a lot of time for anglers and dog walkers don't have a lot of time for cyclists and I think that I actually think there's a lot of tension on canals yeah. and I think tension actually makes quite a good backdrop for crime fiction as well yeah that's it is very true I mean everybody there's like a knock-on effect from everybody isn't there really and uh, it'd be so much nicer because everybody just paint a wonderful picture of living on the canal and I must admit since since moving on board we have found that majority of it is lovely but yes you do hear some and when you know the odd person gets quite shirty and things like that but and also saying about how daunting it can be I agree with you because when you're out especially if you're in the middle of nowhere and it's very dark it yeah. can be very daunting and especially if you've got like we have the dog and you've got to let her out in the night and things like that and you don't think about well we never thought about that when we were moving on board so I completely understand the logic from that yeah so so you, with your stories, um, you say you've got three books out now. Um, so how do you ensure that you get the actual uh, knowledge within the books correct? And sure. Well, I, I've never owned a uh, owned a narrow boat. I, mm -hmm. I can't persuade my wife to. Um, but um, I've hired them a lot over the years, and um, right. we've we've done the uh, Kennet and Avon, the Oxford. Um, Shropshire, um, uh, the all of the all of the Worcester, uh, the Birmingham and Worcester canals we, oh, we've, right. we, we've been on. So, and and if I'm writing a book, I always make sure that I hire a boat and look at it from the water as well as the tow bath before mm. you know when I'm doing my research. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't profess to be an expert boater by any means. Um, and in a way, that didn't matter at the start because Jack Johnson, my hero, is this unemployed divorce journalist. Um, newspaper journalist he doesn't know anything about boats as well he just buys a boat because he's got very little money left from a divorce and he just sees that as a good place to uh to to live on limited yeah. means um like a lot of people i guess yeah um uh so um I, I i try to make sure i get the facts right by having a team of what are called beta readers so I've got six or seven people now, three of whom are very, very experienced boaters um, who, are, who I found on the Canal Forum website. Um, and uh, I always send them my first draft um, and they go through all of the boating stuff with a fine tooth comb, as well as telling me whether they think it's a good story or not. Yeah. Um, and uh, they spot, you know, if I've re referred to something incorrectly or if I've got a particular manoeuvre incorrect or if I've got a boat going uphill rather than downhill by mistake. Um, uh, so I think I, I think to be fair, um, by the third book, um, you know, they came back with very few notes. So I think I'm learning. I'm learning all the detail as I go as well. Yeah. Um, and I. I I obviously read a lot of the the waterways press um waterways world that kind of thing yeah um, and that keeps me up to date with some of the issues on 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 the on the canals yeah um so I try to keep it as realistic as possible but I have to also avoid going into too much technical detail um because I want it to appeal to people who own boats and go boating and people who don't know anything about it at all that's it. And you don't need to get into too much detail because obviously it's just about the crime side of the story and everything and also the main character to learn about him and how he's... So because you yeah. said... So he obviously bought the boat, uh, you say, because of the divorce and everything. And so he's getting more knowledge yeah. as he's go as you go as the books are going along. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the other huge um, help I find for uh, getting all the facts right is I rely on these guys a lot. Um, oh, yeah. Pearson's the canal companions yeah um because they you know they have a wealth of detail um about you know some of the features that are, are on the on the route of the um of the books um 
and what I, I always try to make the books as accurate as possible. So, you know, I refer to specific locks that are there, specific bridges, specific pubs. So I like I just like the idea, especially for the first one where Jack goes on a on a journey from Wooten Warren down to Stratford, then up to Birmingham and then down to Worcester. Mm -hmm. um, so I like the idea of of people, if they want to, retracing the 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 journey in the book and and going to the same pubs and um you know um identifying the same landmarks um oh. and so and what was really uh, really lovely is that in the um latest editions of the Pearson's book uh, Michael Pearson who produces them actually now refers to my my books in his that's book brilliant <laughs> yeah so that's the that's the ultimate accolade i think yeah definitely i must admit when i because i was saying i was saying to you earlier i've just downloaded the first one to start reading on my kindle which is great and i noticed the uh map at yes. the front and it's got all the numbers and everything so i must you know i was looking forward to uh, re, you know that's start fine. reading that so uh, that's a really good thing and because there's a much more of a journey in the first book than the second two books that map is slightly more large scale that you know the maps get I, Michael has done um uh bespoke maps for all of the three books um oh, but the really? second and third maps uh, in the start of the book um are much more detailed um yeah. because the action is more restricted in its geography yeah that's but, really yeah, good. He, he's been really supportive and helpful and he's a he's a star that's bit yeah I must we and um, we use the um Nicholson guides a lot of the time because of the more they seem to be the more uh, in depth for the map side of things but we also have the Pearson's ones because they're fantastic to read because as you say they've got just just I think it's um, more interesting information on them it's not so it's you know other stuff that you don't really need but you, when you're trying to find new places and everything like that I think they come yeah. up with much better information on the villages and the uh, pub as you say the pubs around and things like that isn't it and they're a really good size as well aren't they they're yeah. kind of like you know you, yeah especially if you're on a stern in a wind you know you don't That's want it. too much paper <laughs> flapping around no definitely not no so you've got what's uh, next with your with the the books yeah so so um I, I've always tried to use real stories to inspire my 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 um my books um the mm -hmm. first one as I said was the the rumors of this um canal pusher in um in in Manchester the second book is set in Bath which is called River Rats um this was inspired by, I I know Bath well as I say I kind of was a report young reporter there um yeah. I met my wife there she was a reporter on the paper um and I was reading a story about uh, a, a community on the River Avon near Bath um, that were very upset when a load of boats were allowed by the council to suddenly moor up, if you like, at the bottom of their gardens. And then, then the, the, you know, it turned into a year and a half of almost kind of war between the residents and the boat owners. Oh, right. um, and I thought that was a really interesting idea for a story. Yeah. Uh, so, so I moved the action closer into Bath, where there was a huge um uh building site residential building site alongside the canal mm -hmm. um uh sorry there is near to the near to where the canal and avon joins the river but on the river avon. yeah um and so i came up with this story about these these russian um property developers who were spending millions on a big new housing estate and really didn't want these scruffy narrow boats moored at the end of their estate and then so they embark on a campaign of uh, intimidation really to get rid of the boats and so that was sparked by a, a real story yeah uh, and then Oxford Blues the third book that's really been inspired by um, everything that I've read about county lines activity uh -huh. this is where these these big gangs in big cities like London and Birmingham move into a smaller city to deal with deal drugs or and often they use children um, yeah. in the process as well so that really started me thinking about some of the action that might take place in Oxford so um, I've recently completed a fourth book which is actually set in Amsterdam um, and in a funny kind of way that's because it's Amsterdam it's it turned into a bit more of a an international thriller really rather than a crime crime mystery yeah um, and that's really that really was inspired by the the Russians um carrying out their poisoning in Salisbury and oh. so I had this idea of a, a Russian cell at work in Amsterdam and Jack and Nina my hero and her and end up being caught in the middle of whatever they're up to uh -huh. um, 
Uh, and but before that comes out, I'm trying to work at the moment on well, I'm just finishing the research on a on an idea for it might be a novella rather than a novel, so more like forty five thousand words, and that's yeah. going to that's going to be set near near here near Kinva, um, and uh, feature some underground mines um, that were dug during the war to house an armaments factory, oh, uh, right. and then became a nuclear bunker, and are now a a bonded warehouse for lots of um, wine and whiskey. Oh. So I, 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 but they're supposed to be haunted. Uh -huh. So there's going to be a paranormal element to the story. And I'm, um, I've just been learning how to how to read tarot cards as part of my oh, research. Right. That one. So <laughs> yeah, I, I actually have taken most of the summer off just to come up for air because it's been a you know yeah. pretty pretty continuous for the last five years. Um, but I'm really looking forward now that you know it's getting darker at night and the leaves are turning and I can light the fire I'm just going to hunker down and and make up some more stories that sounds wonderful and so when he goes to the Amsterdam one is he actually living on a boat still over in Amsterdam on the canal yeah Amsterdam? yeah um yeah they finish Oxford Blues have and they come into you know quite a large amount of money um uh -huh. and so I just thought what would they do well they'd probably go off on a holiday together um because they they there, there is a romantic relationship at the heart of the stories. I mean, when Jack first is first divorced and he's living on his boat, he doesn't know anything about the boat, but he meets a young woman on the towpath um, who turns out to be um, uh, a recently uh, bereaved army widow. Uh -huh. um, but she knows her way around boats, so she helps him. And slowly, over the course of the books, their relationship uh, develops. But it really hits a rocky patch in Oxford Blues. Uh, and then comes well, it might come good again. I yeah. can't give away too much. No, that's it. Don't give no, um, no, no, definitely not. <laughs> but they do end up in, in Amsterdam together oh. on holiday. In on holiday, and they yeah. live on a house, house boat, um, and yeah, everything happens around them on the boat. That's fantastic. So that I mean, it, I'm really, really looking forward to reading uh, the first one. As I say, I've downloaded it, so that's uh, definitely going to be. Uh, on the, so where you can get them on kindle so where else can you purchase the books from are they available so, so canal pushers and river rats the first two books um are available in hardback um paperback and kindle oh great. Um, uh, oxford blues the third book is also available on kindle yeah but it's only out in hardback physically at the moment yeah. and so uh my publisher's orphans will be bringing that out as a paperback next summer Oh, brilliant. Uh, um, uh, but I know, you know, if you live on a narrow boat, space is limited. So I know that lots of people kind of read it on Kindle. Yeah. Um, I've had a few, few people um, who are living on boats ask if um, it's on audio as well, but it's not at the moment. That's um, an ambition that the publishers have, but not yeah. yet. Yeah, um, that'll, that'll be a good one. I must admit that it is. I, I do listen to a lot of audio uh, books myself, especially when I'm walking to go to the next lock and things like that i'll often put or first thing in the morning when i'm walking the dogs <laughs> so it's yeah. uh, it is uh, it'll be a good one if you can get it onto that so uh, uh, it'd, be, it'd be great to get it on audio but even better to get it on tv um, oh yeah that, definitely <laughs> <laughs> that'll be the, that's the next thing <laughs> well perfect sunday evening itv viewing i reckon i mean <laughs> definitely and there are so, so many more programs now about the canals on tv aren't there yeah they are um, and, you know there's the canal diaries and there's the history of the canals programs yeah. so, um, yeah. You know, it, it, I think it's just a short leap now into a canal based. That's it. <laughs> yes, you'll have to. Get, I mean, you must have got some uh, people that you know that you can after all those years in the. Well, sadly, I worked in BBC News rather uh, than BBC yeah. Drama. So I, I don't actually have many contacts in in, in, um, in BBC Drama. And I'd probably be wrong to use them anyway. Um, <laughs> But uh, no, yeah, but... That, that that would be fun. I, I I'm often asked at dinner parties who who would play the main characters, and yeah. I honestly don't have a clue. I oh, mean, yeah. um, I, in my mind's eye, Nina looks like a young a young Audrey Hepburn, but oh, um, right. so it's somebody who who looks a bit like that. But yeah. um, obviously, she's not available anymore. No. <laughs> <laughs> And what about Jack? You've got no ideas at all who you'd like to play? Not him? really. I mean, he's forty five. Um, uh he i don't know uh, yeah well daniel craig's available now i understand yeah, that's true <laughs> yes probably about the right um 
<laughs> probably about the right age, but not the right budget, probably. <laughs> no, probably not. But it would be wonderful uh, to be able to get something like that, uh, you know, your books uh, into a TV drama, especially, as you say, Sunday evenings, it, they sound perfect because that's the type of programme that's usually on on a Sunday evening, isn't it? And, of course, they'd have to borrow Eddie off me. Yes. Um, the, Eddie the Border Terrier, who... Um, who features in all of the books. Um, oh, uh, there, there's something on social media called BT Posse, which is Border Terrier Posse. Oh, and right. It's, it's scores and scores of people who own Border Terriers who talk to each other. So uh -huh. I think Eddie has become a bit of a celebrity amongst the oh, Border Terrier Posse. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> um, although it's, it's interesting, I was listening to um, Ian Rankin, you know, who uh -huh. writes the Inspector Rebus novels. Yep. And um, he... he, uh, he I think he's written 24, 25 Rebus novels now. And for the last two, Inspector Rebus is now retired and he picks up this stray dog and adopts this stray dog. Now, when Ian Rankin writes, he writes a chapter, apparently, and then he gives it to his wife, who goes through it and makes notes and gives it back to him. Oh, right. um, and he said the problem since he's had a dog in the books is that she's constantly giving him the chapters back and saying, you haven't fed the dog, you haven't watered the dog, you haven't <laughs> taken the dog for a walk. If you're going to have a dog, you need to be a responsible owner, you know. Oh, how funny. <laughs> so he keeps forgetting about the dog. <laughs> Just bring it back in when, when it's convenient. <laughs> It's amazing that it takes over the book, doesn't it, about the dog instead of the actual <laughs> storyline yeah. that was meant to be there. That's right. Oh, dear me. You've got to get all these facts right and everything because people, yeah, you know, I suppose people do pick up on the animals more so than the humans, don't they? Well, I, I very quickly learned that, yes, um, you know, a crime writer can have a, 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 an enormous body count all over their book. But woe betide you if anything happens to the to the dog or the cat, you know, in, in the book. Then, you know, that that's crossing that's crossing um, crossing a line. Yeah. So humans can die as violently as, as you like all over the place, but nothing must happen to the dog. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, well, well thank you ever so much for uh, coming onto the podcast and i'm hoping that uh, lots of other people read your um books and that much. eventually we can watch it on tv that would be absolutely perfect we will have to keep looking out <laughs> and uh, fingers crossed it happens eventually uh, thank you very much and if anybody wants to get hold of the books it's um yeah uh canal pushers river rats and oxford blues um uh, and they're all available on Amazon or from decent bookshops. And um, uh, yeah, I hope people enjoy them. And, and you know, if you, if you do or you don't, please contact me and let me know. Yeah, definitely. If you want to say they can put comments and everything and obviously I'll let you know. And if you've got a website, we can put that onto the, uh, yeah. into the podcast and everything as well so that you'll be able to. That's great. And, and you can, you know, anybody can leave an Amazon review and it's, it, you know, the more the merrier. I think it's great. To, they're really helpful to have up there and they help to draw attention to a book and spread yeah. the word. Definitely. But 30,000 odd, I think, canal boats owners out there and more than there were now, more people living aboard like you. Yeah. Than there were at the height of the Industrial Revolution. I know, it's which, madness, isn't it? <laughs> it is. But, you know, it's, it is amazing the way that, it, you know, that's all all come together. It um, has, and I think, well, we've done it for a lifestyle change completely. But I sure. know when we're speaking to people while we've been traveling around, because I mean, we've only been on for six months, a lot of the younger people are now moving on because it's such a cheaper way, much cheaper way of living, and they can get into their own property so they're not paying rent to somebody else. Which I don't blame them, and if they can do it and work yeah. and have a better life, it's a much much better way of uh, doing things for them. I know, and the the events of this week, last week, yeah, um, you know, my son, my son and his partner have spent about five years saving a deposit yeah. um they had uh they put in an offer on a on a flat in london um and now their mortgage probably won't be af affordable so you yeah. know that may, may all fall through so it's heartbreaking and yeah as you say some people are turning to the canals as an affordable alternative and not just affordable you know it's actually kind of a really special place to live um you know it's not for everybody but um no. I, can, I, 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 I can really see the appeal myself i just don't think i can persuade my wife to let me downsize yeah it, it, that's the bit, that is the worst part and especially obviously as an author and you've got i can see obviously I'm, we're on zoom now and i can see you've got lots of books as well behind you and that was i must admit that was the most difficult for me was getting yeah. rid of 
well, I haven't got rid of, I must, we've kept them into storage because I've got an awful lot of books over the years. Yeah. Um, but I have still bought a lot onto the boat, but I've had to like put them into hiding places and have to remember where they all are now to be able to read them. Yeah, the downsizing is uh, definitely a difficult one, but you do it and uh, it is a wonderful life. Um, so uh, I can rec- highly recommend it to anybody and uh, highly recommend it to your wife if she decides ever to try it. <laughs> and, be- and best of luck with all your writing. It sounds Thank really you. exciting. Yeah, it's uh, it's good fun. The uh, Mexi, uh, the boat dog, she keeps appearing in different places and having a, her adventures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brilliant. So, right, thank you very much anyway. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to the Alternative Living Chat. I hope you've enjoyed today as we spoke to Andy Griffey. All his books are available on Kindle and Amazon plus other bookshops. You can also check out his website, which is andygriffey.co.uk, and you're able to sign up to his newsletter. If there's any other information, please don't hesitate to give me a shout, and I can point you in the right direction. And remember, if you'd like to have a chat with me, just drop me a message. And also remember that you can buy all the books I've been writing since been living on Never Too Late on Amazon. Just check out Maxine K. Brown and you can see the adventures of Mexi the Boat Dog. So here's till next time. Thanks for listening. Oh, and if you don't, if you do have time, I'd love you to just drop us a review. Thank you. Bye.